Liza Berend is a young Jew from Durham, New Hampshire, who cares about the future of all Jewish people and of all people. She studied at Brandeis University. She's now a community organizer and coordinator at the Gay Men's Health Crisis Center and lives in Brooklyn, New York. She was arrested as part of the Occupy Wall Street movement and is an active voice on behalf of injustice everywhere. Liza, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi there! So it's good to have you, Liza. Uh, you were recently featured in a YouTube video that went viral. It's called Jewish Activists to APAC Stop Silencing Dissent. Who is APAC? Who is APAC? That's a great question. APAC is um, the Israel lobby in the United States, arguably one of the most or the most powerful lobbies uh, in the country. Um, and they, they work to bring the interests of the current Israeli administration to Washington. Uh, and they have done a, a really um, incredibly thorough job building a, a near consensus among um, our U.S. senators and Congress people on the, the need of the U.S. to support Isra Israeli policy, no matter what it is. So that means policy towards the Palestinians, even though that involves um, gross violations of human rights. Uh, right now, they're really pushing for a more aggressive policy towards Iran, um, and many are saying that it's echoing the same kind of push that APAC um, put on the U.S before the war in Iraq. Uh, so um, there was a, a group there called Occupy APAC, there to um, counter the influence of the APAC conference and hoping to bring a more uh, humane and just foreign policy to Washington. Okay, so you mentioned a group called Occupy APAC. Where was that meeting being held? Um, this was a... a uh, a counter-conference that consisted of both policy panels and actions and demonstrations um, outside of the APAC convention, which was taking place at the Mount Vernon Convention Center in D.C. Um, and also there were some demonstrations taking place by the White House during a meeting between um, Netanyahu and Obama. Okay, and so you mentioned that uh, this group APAC is silencing a message. One of your message was opposing settlements is not anti-Semitic. What settlements are you talking about? Uh, the settlements are the illegal colonies that are going on um, in the occupied West Bank right now. They're, um, so. Under international law, the West Bank is a part of Israel Palestine that is designated for a future Palestinian state. It's, it's not um, the property of Israel, but since the war in 1967, Israel has been occupying it um, and um, transferring its own population into Palestinian lands. Um, so this isn't just about Jews moving into Palestine, it's about a, um, a system of segregation and displacement. Um, and, two, it, and two different systems, one for Jews that uh, have access to um, all the resources of the Israeli government who are incentivizing them to go live on Palestinian land, um, and another system for um, Palestinians who are living under military rule um, and in poverty and unable to um, access the resources necessary to build uh, a functioning society. I so, see. Uh, right, so the, the settlement is the continued construction of, um, of uh, Jewish colonial cities. So, yeah. you said supporting BDS is not anti-Semitic. What is BDS? Ah, thank you. Uh, well, BDS is the, is the Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions movement um, that aims to target um, these discriminatory Israeli policies um, based off of the successful movement to end the apartheid system in South Africa. Um, so it's a, it's a growing global movement. It was called for by Palestinian civil society in 2005. 
and there are groups all over the world that are you know, boycotting consumer products for Mitch Barrel, um, divesting from multinational corporations that uh, profit off of um, the occupation of Palestine, and pressuring governments to, to put sanctions on Israel. Um, and there's, there's been a lot of pushback from Jewish institutions, particularly in the U.S., um, that see this as um, a challenge, as, as challenging the, the credibility of Israel in the U.S. Um, and uh, breaking a, a perceived consensus in the U.S. that we must support all Israeli policies. And it's getting framed as um, a, uh, a, an anti-Semitic movement. Uh, this is a way of, of slandering the movement by saying that uh, BDS activists um, aren't aren't about policy change, they just hate Jews. They just want to see the destruction of the Jewish state. Um, while when you actually look at the call for BDS, uh, the demands um, are completely nonviolent. The demands are full equality for Palestinians living within Israel, um, an end to the occupation of the West Bank and Gaza, where Palestinians are living, and a right of return for Palestinian refugees. I see. So, do you, are you afraid at all that by boycotting or divesting resources from uh, people who live within a certain geographical region, uh, do you feel like that's holding individuals accountable for their government's actions? That's a great question. I think a common misconception about BDS is that the goal of it is to, to cripple the Israeli economy. Um, and Honestly, um, that's a very far reach to say that uh, the BDS movement, that grassroots organizing, would ever get to the point of crippling the Israeli economy. The Israeli con economy is one of the strongest in the world, um, it, and um, I, I don't think it's in that much danger. Um, even if the U.S. were to um, to uh, sanction Israel by um, stopping sending $3 billion a year in military aid, um, Israel would still be doing fine in their military and their um, domestic economy. Um, but the, the goal of PDS is more to uh, apply strategic pressure. Um, in, in, in South Africa, it was not a crippling of the economy that um, actually led to an end of apartheid. It was more the psychological feeling of becoming a pariah state. Um, and and corporations you know, feeling um, feeling the pressure and, and and their economic incentives actually changing. So the the BDS victories that are happening right now are actually happening on the scale of um, of multinational corporations. So um, you know, European company is that uh, the Israeli government is contracting to build um, a a train or a road that connects. Israeli city with um, Jewish settlements without allowing Palestinians off them, for example. There have been boycott campaigns and domestic campaigns against these companies, and, and some of them have pulled out of the project. Um, that, that, and this is actually you know, disincentivizing global corporations from participating in the, um, creating the infrastructure of occupation, which is making this kind of oppression harder and harder to implement. I see. Well, thank you for explaining that a little further. My favorite quote from your video, and I have to say I watched it at least a dozen times already. It's just great. Um, there, you, my favorite quote was, there's nothing wrong with being Jewish and supporting human rights. Do you want to speak to that a little bit? For sure, yeah. Um, I mean, there's this ironic, the, the way that the rhetoric of human rights is, is being used around Israel, because you know, human rights, is a, the Declaration of Human Rights was written in the in the wake of the Holocaust, um, you know, the terrible genocide against European Jews, um, and is, is meant to, to help <laughs> support the rights of all people, of course, that's, that's inherent in human rights, um, but, but now, um, it is, it, um, 
internationally, Israel is recognized as um, violating the human rights of Palestinians, and Jewish institutions and the Israeli government brush it off as if human rights is just a tool to delegitimize. Um, the Israeli government and the Jewish state. Uh, and, and this is really preposterous to say that uh, asking a state to respect international standards of human rights means that you fundamentally oppose the state or that you oppose the people of the state. Um, and, and, and the fact that you know, uh, people who, who defend the Palestinians are called anti-Semitic, and Jews who defend Palestinians are called um, self-hating Jews. Uh, so I really want to um, clear up the misconception that was uh, being repeated over and over again um, in this panel on Israel on campus that uh, supporting the human rights of the Palestinians is necessarily in opposition to supporting Israelis. There was applause after you made that comment. Uh, what do you think the applause was for? That's a great question. I wonder that. Um, I, it, it might have been an attempt to drown me out, because before the applause starts, you can see this, this guy at the front of the room who's um, you know, making an arm motion, as if trying to get people to stand up, uh, maybe to sort of to lock me out. Um, but it, a lot of it seems like like sort of supportive. <laughs> and uh, a funny thing about APAC is a lot of people attending the conference are not necessarily APAC supporters because APAC invests a huge amount of money into um, getting people to go to the conference, particularly students. There were are, are about a thousand students at the conference and many of them um, were given full rides for the, um, the trip to BC and the conference registration, um, and, and APEC reaches out to um, to student leaders um, in student government, in um, all kinds of activist groups not related to to Israel. So a lot of people uh, see it as a free trip to DC and uh, a chance to learn about the Middle East, but. Uh, might have actually been quite happy to, to see me jump up there um, and disrupt this, uh, this panel that was quite ridiculous. Well, I know I sure was happy to see you do that, and I'm not the only one, because this video has received over 30,000 views in just the last few days. Were you expecting that? Um, good question. Uh, no, I don't think I was. I actually... Um, you know, I, I snuck into the into the conference uh, with, with a banner, not totally sure where I was going to pull the banner out and, and what I was going to do, and um, it just sort of fell into place and happened, and I'm really glad that other people are inspired by the message. So, yeah, the, the moment moved you, it seems. Well, I'm glad it did. The video where the woman goes to the camera and says, ignore her, who filmed that? <laughs> What? Who filmed that? Oh, who filmed that? Um, that was that is a fantastic activist from Code Pink named Allie McCracken. And she she was in that uh, in the room with me and uh, encouraged me to go up and and really made the whole thing happen. So, uh, are you associated with Code Pink Action? Uh, yeah, I am. I'm not. Uh, I, I I'm more directly affiliated with Jewish Voice for Peace, um, which is one of the uh, co-sponsors of Occupy APAC and how I ended up there. But Code Pink was the main organizer of the whole conference, and I am a huge, huge fan of everything they do. Oh, cool. Well, you left the stage of your own accord. What told you it was time to step down? Had, nobody had tried to take me down. They just kind of stood there and, uh, and, and chaos erupted. Um, so I, I felt like I had got my point across and I saw the security guards heading my way. So but I don't really feel like being dragged anywhere. I'll just, I'll just walk out. Well, would you have been arrested if it came to that? Or are you telling me um, no? I don't, I don't think so. Um, I 
studied, I was, I was taken out by private security and, and brought to um, some people who were perhaps the police. They, one of them told me they were Homeland Security. I don't know if that actually makes sense. <laughs> um, but that I was briefly detained and questioned, um, but then was let go and banned from coming back into the conference center. Were you on public or private property? I, you know what? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I would get. I think that it is. I think it's private property. I think it's a privately owned convention center in DC. Um, but I'm not sure of that. So that'd be a good thing to, to check into. It's the Mount Vernon Convention Center. Oh, okay. So I'll check into that for uh, this yeah. interview. The woman who asked if she could interview you for her school newspaper. Who said no? You may not. Um, that was some, some, some random APAC delegate. I don't know who she was. <laughs> Does she speak she, uh, for you? She sort of followed me out and, and hovered around the security. Does she speak for you? Uh, did she speak for me? Yeah. Uh, or was, was the woman asking, I was confused about that part of the video. Is the w girl with the camera asking to interview the woman or you? The, oh, the, the woman with the camera is asking to interview me. And um, this other woman is saying, no, you may not. Because at the time I, was, I had just been taken out by security. So. Wow. How revealing that she thinks she can speak for other people. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, and Victor said, I think we should have, we should have uh, made that clear in the video who was talking because I saw some comment on a website that, that oh, my parents says she wants dialogue, but then she, but like they, they thought that they thought that I had said no, you may not, and I, I realized it wasn't totally clear in the video. The first time I watched it, that's what I thought was the case, but then I I watched it again. Uh, knowing that I didn't believe my ears, so then it, the story became a little clearer. So you mentioned right. that you were silenced at Brandeis in Hillel. What is Hillel, and what is the message that was being censored? Well, uh, Hillel is um, a international organization for Jewish life on campus, and there are chapters on, on many, many U.S. campuses um, that aim to be a community center for all Jews. Um, and Brandeis University, since it's a, um, a Jewish-affiliated school, is exceptional in that the Hillel claims to be a resource for the entire campus. Actually, every Brandeis student, whether or not they are they identify as Jewish, um, is officially a Hillel member and can, can vote in Hillel elections. Um, and Hillel is also an umbrella group for, for Jewish clubs. Um, and Jewish Voice for Peace, uh, which is my organization that I was founded there at Brandeis um, was not allowed to uh, become part of Hillel. Um, so we were effectively excluded from the organized Jewish community um, based on our support for the boycott of settlements. Um, that was the, the explicit, the stated reason that they gave us. Um, so that's that's a lot of where I'm coming from and what I'm saying in the video. I'm saying that, you know, it's okay to be Jewish and support human rights. It's, it, it's not a contradiction. So, ideally, what would be, uh, if you could snap your fingers and see a different world, What what is the type of world that you're looking to create? Mm, that is a big question. Um, I mean, in the in the Middle East, uh, in Israel and Palestine, I would like to see the um, the goals of the um, of the BDS call met. I'd like to see an end to the occupation and a a, a free and for all Palestinian people in Israel and the West Bank and Gaza and um, in the diaspora to be free to, to return to their home and um, live as full citizens. Um, I, it doesn't particularly matter to me whether this looks like a, a one-state or a two-state solution, although I think that the two-state solution is becoming um, more and more unlikely with the continuing um, construction of settlements. Um, and I, I think that you know, with, with, just, um, with just policies, and um, 
a, a real a government with a commitment to human rights, um, that, that this sort of, of peaceful coexistence is possible. Um, and then in the, as, as for um, you know, my own Jewish community in the United States, I'd like to see a Jewish community that really embraces um, a diversity of ideas about uh, morality and ethics and politics and nationalism and, um, and a, a Jewish identity that is not dependent on um, the, the preserving the policies of um, an a, a ethno-nationalist entity. Um, I think that Judaism is a lot more than that, and um, the international Jewish community should foster many expressions of Judaism. I see. Well, you've offered some great suggestions of what individuals can do. You've mentioned that individuals can form communities which are united against this type of injustice. But furthermore, I'm curious to see your feelings on withdrawing your support from the American Empire for their actions uh, in relation to Israel. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people, when hearing about the BDS movement for Israel, say respond, "Why boycott Israel? You should boycott the U.S." <laughs> um, which I think I think is is, is reasonable <laughs> since you know the U.S. Uh, um, is really allows Israel to perpetuate human rights abuses in their um, economic, diplomatic, and military support. Um, Israel probably. Could, might not be able to get away with, with everything it does if, without um, U.S. support. Uh, but uh, ultimately, yeah, the, the, the U.S. and Israel um, are, perform, are, are fulfilling similar roles in the world um, in enacting policies that are based on, on their narrow um, economic uh, incentives and, and this kind of imperialist vision of making a better world by um, being a model of democracy. In the U.S.'s case, that means you know, exporting democracy by force. And in Israel's case, that means um, maintaining its claim as the only democracy in the Middle East while um, doing everything in its power to keep anti-democratic leaders like Mubarak uh, in power. Um, so both uh, both nations are um, living out very. Uh, both nations are quite hypocritical in the way that they talk about political values. Well, Liza, I want to thank you for your time today. Thanks for your bravery and your commitment to freedom, justice, and peace. Is there anything else you'd like to say to the listeners? Um, I just like to say, if, if you want to you know, take action on on the. the uh, issues Occupy APAC has been standing for, um, go to OccupyAPAC.org and there are some, some actions you can sign on to and resources if you want to do local organizing um, for things like you know opposing a war in Iran. And we really need as many people as possible taking action. Um, but yeah, thank you, Doug. It was great to be on this show and thank you for, for hosting it. Oh, my pleasure. Is there a website you can plug? Um, yes www.occupyapac.org Okay, thank you so much for your time.